Within this week's astrology, the Virgo new moon is asking for a cleanup on aisle U. Hi, all. Um, my name is Haley Comet. Welcome to my cosmic corner of the internet. It may look a little different today, but the intention of Magic Monday remains the same, where we are getting you dialed into the week of astrology that is before you, the week of September 2nd to September 8th, 2024, to be specific, to let you know beyond just what you can expect with this week's astrology, how you can synchronize with this week's astrology. Here on Magic Monday, we believe in making your life more magical by understanding these celestial cycles and what it is that they are here to teach us, how we can work with them, and how we cannot force against what is not flowing, <laughs> astrologically speaking, in order to navigate our lives with a lot more alignment. So if it is your first time here, hello, welcome. This is not my typical backdrop. We'll cover that in a moment. But let's talk about this week's astrology. So the week starts off with a Virgo new moon. And something that I love about astrology is that we really do get these cosmic do-overs. <laughs> which I love. Life really is full of do-overs. No, we do not have a button where we can time travel and go back in time and make different decisions, but we have a new moon every single month, my love. You might have had a rough August, my love. It's a new month. It's a new moon. It's a new you. And that's why I love astrology is because it gives us so many opportunities to begin again. And since Mercury is now direct, that happened last week, you can get dialed in on last week's Magic Monday above, we are now given clearance to look towards the future. You are not the same person that you were when Mercury was retrograde. And with this new moon, it's an opportunity around, okay, whatever Mercury retrograde had in store for me, whatever transpired within August 2024, that is in the past. I'm looking towards the future. I'm not that person any longer. And to know that the power is in the present. And with this new moon, it's an opportunity around whatever transpired, whether it's last month, last year, the first chunk of your life, your power is in the present moment. And the cosmos is giving this opportunity to plant seeds around new rituals and new routines that genuinely support your well-being, your physical, emotional, and spiritual wellness. And to know that you are not defined by whatever has transpired within the past. We'll talk about it, but with Sun opposite Saturn this week, it's so important not to get stuck in judgment loops of yourself or shame loops of yourself around being so stuck around, why did I do that? Why did I do that? That you keep enforcing the negative behavior or the negative pattern because you are unable to break out of this shame loop. It keeps you stuck. And so there's an ask this week to really center yourself within self-love around, I forgive what transpired within the past with Mercury and Leo training Chiron, and my focus is on the future with the new moon in Virgo and the ruler of the new moon in Virgo, Mercury, now direct. My focus is on the future. And with Sun opposite Saturn this week, there can be a temptation to be very hard on ourselves. Viewing things through this lens of forgiveness and acceptance and genuine self-love rather than criticism and judgment is going to be incredibly important this week. Because while the Virgo new moon is ripe, for planting seeds of desire around new rituals that you want to integrate, new routines that you want to see reflected within your day-to-day, -day, new action steps for you to bring visions down into your physical reality. While the Virgo new moon is fertile soil to plant all of those visions, desires, and intentions, we are navigating astrology that may make you feel not so motivated not so inspired. We have Mars and Gemini squaring off with Neptune and then entering Cancer, the sign of its fall. Mars is our action. It's our assertion. It's our motivation. And with it squaring Neptune and then entering territory where it does not thrive in, you may find that your motivation waxes and wanes just along with the moon. Got Mars entering Cancer. Cancer rolls the moon. The moon from our vantage point here on Earth it is the quickest celestial body. It's constantly changing signs. It's changing phases. And so we could feel like our energy is fluctuating quite a bit. So you might be feeling really inspired at some parts of the week around, yeah, I'm going to be hitting the gym, or I'm going to work on this passion project, or I'm going to volunteer for this organization. Like there might be moments in which you are feeling it. And there might be moments that you're not feeling it so much. And it's okay to have those waxes and wanes. It's important for you to be just as present with your work as you are with your rest. 
Because let's say you're exhausted, right? You are so tired and you're trying to force yourself into going for a workout and you're just like lying in bed. You're not even able to rest and recuperate because you're just beating yourself up around, you really should be working out. You really should be working out. You really should be working out. You weren't even present for that nap. You've just spent like basically an hour in bed hating yourself for not doing another action step when you could have just listened to your body. When we talk about physical, emotional, and spiritual wellness, it's not about being a robot. It's not about being a machine. It's about trusting yourself as the pilot <laughs> of your plane. What comes out of my mouth sometimes? I don't know, but it's trusting yourself as the pilot. So how we're pilots this week. It's trusting yourself as a pilot of your plane, of the captain of your ship, that you can trust yourself to make the decisions that are in alignment with overall wellness which is not every moment of the day, hustle, grind, and green juice, and doing all the things. It's, yes, a lot of your routine reflecting these visions of physical, emotional, spiritual, financial wellness that you want to see, but it's also having compassion for yourself in those moments where it's like, I am exhausted, or I am feeling drained, I need to take a nap. I know I said I was going to go to the gym after work, but I feel driving to the beach would actually fill up my soul more. It's checking in with yourself, because there's no use in eating all of this healthy food if you are consuming the diet of hating yourself as you are digesting it. There's no use in hitting the treadmill and hitting the elliptical, burning all of these calories if you're burning yourself from the inside out via your self-hatred. There's no use logging all of these extra hours at work so that your bank account is happy just to the suffering of your own physical and mental health. Wellness and health in every element of your life is about balance. And so there's an ask this week to just be present with yourself, to know that while it can be very optimal to integrate new rituals and new routines and new goals and all of that, it's important to allow yourself that space to fluctuate because staying in those guilt or shame loops around, oh, I can't believe you didn't go to the gym after work, you're useless, that's actually going to enforce more negative behavior that's not in alignment with physical, emotional, and spiritual health. You could do all of the right things, quote unquote, and still not be treating yourself right. It's important to nourish yourself from the inside out and to know that this week is an opportunity to begin again whatever transpired in August. Maybe your habits and your rituals got off course. Try again this week. And if you have a day that you go to the, go to the beach instead of go to the gym, if you have a day that you don't eat food that's completely in alignment with, with your eating plan, there's no better opportunity than right now to begin again. And just to say, hey, what transpired, transpired. I'm going to choose to view this situation through the lens of acceptance, through the lens of self-love, the lens of compassion, and just making decisions today that are in the betterment of all that I am, which is not just my physical vessel, it is not just my bank account, it's all that I am, and I can trust myself to make the decisions that take care of all that I am. So we will go so much more in depth with this energy as well as so much more. We've also got Mercury squaring Uranus. We've got Mercury entering its exaltation of Virgo at the end of the week. We will, of course, break it down thematically as well as day by day. But before we do, take a step inside my cosmic cafe. Let me know, my loves, what are you sipping on to start this week? So my Virgo new moon beverage of choice is this Big Island Booch kombucha. This is the Lilikoi Lush flavor. It is absolutely divine. I love everything Lilikoi, especially obviously being here as the name would imply I'm currently on the big island in Hawaii I'm here in my best friend's home she was generous enough to allow me to utilize her space as the backdrop for this week's magic Monday so that our weekly astrology forecast could continue on even when I'm elsewhere in the globe in a different cosmic corner of the internet she and I met up together in Kauai and got to explore there last week. And then I followed her back home to her home here on the big island. And there's really no words that I could utilize to summarize <laughs> this experience and just how eye-opening, profound, and deeply therapeutic <laughs> it has been. Hawaii is such a sacred place and one that I have a lot of respect for. Just learning more about the history and the culture and just learning about the nature and the wildlife and the food and being able to see my best friend's life living here has been so special. And it's a very, very healing place. And pretty much every moment that I've been here, I've been outside just because the nature is just jaw-droppingly stunning. Like there's simply no words. I've been in a perpetual state of awe <laughs> exploring here. We've been hiking and biking and obviously swimming. I mean, I would say probably 95% of my time here in Hawaii has been in the ocean. <laughs> 
Where are my fellow water signs at? Okay, floating in the ocean, swimming in the ocean. Ooh, that just recharges my soul. And today, waking up, I was like, Haley, you've got to film today. <laughs> You've got to film today. And I love what it is that I do, but it's just so hard staying indoors here because I just feel perpetually lured outside by the ocean and the hikes and just everything is so lush and so beautiful here. It's been hard to stay inside even for a moment, but I was like, Haley, today's the day. We got to film. I was meant to utilize the time before filming to do my hair and makeup, but I was like, mm, I could do my hair and makeup or I could go jump in the ocean. So can you imagine which I picked? I chose to go jump in the ocean. So I'm literally fresh out of the ocean. I'm not kidding. I probably got out of the ocean 30 minutes ago. I still have some sand on my ankle. My hair still smells like the ocean. I'm not wearing that much makeup. It just felt like a better usage of my time to be outside and to be in the ocean, which it's gonna sound weird, but that was kind of a win for me, honestly. And I think this is important to keep in mind, especially since we're in Virgo season, we've got this Virgo new moon. Virgo is an archetype that is deep associated with perfectionism and keep in mind we've got a Virgo new moon so it is this commitment to want to purify ourselves to want to be the best that we can be to strive for perfection which again doesn't exist like striving for perfection keeps us in those guilt and shame loops that are important to shift our way out of especially with this week's astrology and a lot of you know that I am a Virgo moon and rising in the battle against perfectionism has been something that has been woven into the entirety <laughs> of my life. And it felt like a win in a small way this morning that I chose to go outside and be in the ocean rather than get ready and look just right and make sure everything was perfect. Obviously, I have a lot of respect for what it is that I do. I have a lot of respect for you guys. I want these forecasts to be the best possible that they could be. But to me, it just felt like a better usage of my time to be charged up by the ocean rather than caked up. <laughs> with concealer like even beyond makeup which I do enjoy doing I just wasn't in the mood today my battle around wanting things to be perfect has taken so much time from me so it felt really empowering honestly to just make the decision of what was in alignment with my own happiness and joy and knowing that yeah you're gonna see some flaws in my skin I have this struggle bun that you're probably seeing me redo many times over because I did not brush my hair after getting out of the ocean but I'm happy. And sometimes that's the best way that you can show up. It's not trying to be perfect and trying to be a robot, but just showing up as you are. Happy, authentic, maybe a little messy, maybe a little flawed, but we all are. Because to me, I've had times in my life where I put so much pressure on everything being perfect on the outside and I was a disaster <laughs> on the inside. It just feels very empowering to prioritize what people do not see, but allows me to show up as the best that I can possibly be. And it's important just with the energy of Virgo New Moon that we center this desire to want to be the best that we can, not through this lens around wanting to be perfect and wanting everything to be perfect, but just striving to show up the best that we possibly can be. So with that being said, let's go ahead and transition into our next segment of Magic Monday called Vibe Check of the Week. So this portion of Magic Monday is where we utilize a metaphoric storytelling device in order to bring the stars down to earth because we can talk all day long about Mars squaring Neptune and Mars entering Cancer and Mercury square Uranus, but a lot of times it'll leave us with questions around how does that impact the day in, day out mundane mechanics of my world? How is that going to show up within my grocery store trip this week, within my trip to go visit my grandpa, within my big meeting at work? This is a technique that we utilize in order to tune into how this astrology can surface within your physical reality. I'm not saying this exact scenario will play out within your world. I'm just saying tune into the emotions, the dynamics, the themes in order to make sense of what may come alive within your universe as you navigate this week's astrology and every week's astrology for that matter. So this week's astrology feels like a very particular sort of morning. <laughs> A very particular sort of morning. The sort of morning when you have overindulged the night prior. Let's say that you had a few too many, okay? You had a few too many Mai Tais, you had a few too many beers, you had a few too many, whatever your beverage of choice, and I know not everybody drinks, so let's say you overindulged in something else. Maybe you door dashed a ton of food, maybe you online shopped for hours and bought a bunch of stuff that you don't need. There was just basically an excessive night, okay, the night prior. And this week's Magic Monday takes us into the morning after this excessive night. 
And we will say for the sake of the vibe track that you had a few too many. You had a few too many beverages and you made some decisions that you're not necessarily proud of. You were definitely inebriated and you're lying in bed just thinking about, my goodness, I've got to get my life together. <laughs> you're just beating yourself up around the mistakes that were made the night prior. You're having anxiety around it around, oh my gosh, I did what? I texted what to who? And you're just kind of in this guilt trip energy and just thinking about, oh, I've got to get my life together. Like I cannot indulge like that any longer. I cannot text this person any longer. I cannot order DoorDash any longer. Like I've got to get my life together. I don't feel good. It doesn't feel good making these decisions that I've been making. I've got to get my act together. I've got to clean up my act, right? And there's no better time than a Virgo new moon, right? This Virgo new moon opposes Saturn. And this energy can make us a little harsh on ourselves, absolutely. Like there can be a temptation to beat ourselves up around, I cannot believe you text that person, you're so dumb. Or gosh, did you need the extra round of shots? Like, do you have a brain? Like there could be a temptation to beat yourself up this week and you cannot hate yourself into loving yourself. You cannot beat yourself up in order to get into habits that genuinely support yourself. Like it's really important to center these decisions around knowing that you are worthy now to show up for yourself and to take care of yourself. Because oftentimes when we beat ourselves up, it actually enforces those negative behaviors. Like the shame guilt loop spiral is a real thing. And that if you have that moment where you overindulge the night prior and you stay in bed and you're just like, God, you're so stupid and you're so dumb, what do you want to do to escape from those thoughts? You want to drink again. You want to indulge again. If you're beating yourself up around, gosh, I can't believe you shopped much because that doesn't feel good, you automatically go to what you think will take that pain away, which is whatever vice is yours, whether it's online shopping or ordering too much food on DoorDash or overindulging in beverages. Oftentimes when we're in that guilt or shame loop, it enforces the very thing that we're beating ourselves up for. It is a vicious cycle. And so it takes that decision. And that's what this week's vibe check is around lying in bed. We're a little lazy. Okay. I said it. We've got Mars square and Neptune. It's kind of one of those mornings where you're like, I should go to the gym, right? I should apologize <laughs> to that person where I said those things too, or I should do this. I should do that. But you're just thinking it, right? We've got Mars and Gemini. You're just thinking it. You're, you're fantasizing around all the things you should be doing. You're like, I should clean my living room. I should atone for my sins. <laughs> I should apologize to that person, but you're not doing any of it. You're just in bed, stewing in it, and thinking about all the different things that you could do. And again, with Sun opposite Saturn, the new moon opposite Saturn, there is a strong temptation this week around beating yourself up. But we've also got Mercury square Uranus. Now, this is the third and final time that this happens. This has been a hallmark part of the Mercury retrograde story. And this can be a perspective shift around, this is not making me feel good. Making these decisions are not making me feel good. Like what's genuinely going to shift my life? How can I anchor these new decisions and these new rituals and these new habits and these new ways of spending my Friday night, these new ways of coping with the stresses of life, these new ways of socializing? How am I going to root this in this energy around wanting myself to feel good? Like it's not feeling good to make decisions that I'm not proud of. It's not feeling good to spend money that I don't have. It's not feeling good to order three times the amount of food that I can consume. Like what is going to allow me to shift my behaviors in a way that's not rooted in guilt or shame, but in rooted in love and compassion. And we see this just with Mercury trying Chiron around forgiving yourself. Like we cannot go back and undo the Mai Tais. Can't go back and undo you adding random things to your cart in order to get the free shipping. <laughs> when you're online shopping, we can't undo the eight tacos. Like we can't undo that. All we have control over is this moment. And we'll say it's like that, you know, hungover morning or that morning where you're having some regret or some guilt or shame around, I can't undo that. All I can do is strive to do better today. And there's parts of it that are a little over idealistic. Like I said, Mars square Neptune, there could be a temptation where thinking there, you go to the extreme, right? Around, I'm going to go vegan. I'm going to run 13 miles every single day. I'm gonna volunteer every single day to work on being a better person. I'm going to delete every contact in my phone until I'm in a healthier state of mind. These idealistic thoughts that yes, might be beneficial, but it's really important when we're striving to integrate sustainable lifestyle shifts, that they're just that sustainable. It's not sustainable living in extremes. And oftentimes when we're overly in the side around orderly and just perfectionistic, right? Around 13 miles and green juice, like oftentimes there will be a part in which we wanna go wild and we wanna drink Mai Tais or we wanna online shop. Like we're looking for balance, but we are looking for ultimately most of your rituals and routines to be indicative of where you wanna go.
because those big visions, those big dreams, they're made up of a lot of smaller decisions. And so it's just taking a moment to be like, this slice of my life, is this getting me to where it is that I want to go? around if someone were to take that night that I had and see how much I spent on my ties and I spent my night like arguing with people from my past, like is that getting me to where it is that I wanna go? This vision that I have in my mind of peace and wellness and health, whatever that looks like to you. And it's not perfection. It's just moving towards that vision of joy and happiness and wellness and wanting your rituals and routines to be indicative of that. There will be times in which you'll online shop, okay? There'll be times that you door dash a taco too many. <laughs> There will be a time, sure, that you indulge in a Mai Tai. That's life where human beings enjoy this planet. But it is this energy around having most of your rituals and routines indicative for the direction that you want to go. It's seeing that vision around, I want my life to feel peaceful. And knowing that that peaceful vision is the decisions that we make within the micro around this decision around drinking cups of water in between the Mai Tais, right? Knowing when to say good night. Like those little decisions that we make can have huge ripple effects around just those little decisions around I'm gonna hydrate more, I'm gonna say no to the extra drink, right? I'm going to get to bed at a decent hour. It could be the differentiator around whether you stay in bed all day, hating yourself and guilting yourself for the decision that you made, or whether you're energized enough to get up early and to go for a walk and go volunteer and call your grandpa and all of these things. Every Everything affects something else, even the little things. That small decision around, mm, should I order the Mai Tai or should I order a water? Should I go home in a half hour? Should I, should I go home now? Should I text this person? Should I not? All of these decisions have significance that ripples out. And it's when we keep ourselves suspended around feeling like it needs to be these huge extreme things. Sometimes it's just those small decisions around my vision is peace, so I'm going to make the decisions that will allow me to start my day in a peaceful way. <laughs> my vision is success, so I'm gonna make sure that I'm taking care of my vessel so that I'm able to show up for my business. Or my vision is a healthy relationship, so I'm gonna make sure the rituals and routines that I have are moving us in the direction of that healthy relationship rather than other directions. Sometimes it helps to kind of think of our actions as kind of this snowball, right? And oftentimes we don't realize how our rituals and routines are creating the snowball effect until it's gotten too far, until we're like, gosh, I have a problem, or gosh, I'm stuck in this loop that I can't get out of. And it's just taking that step moment around, if I keep doing what I've been doing, am I going to like what I'm going to get? And it's not viewing it through this lens of shame and guilt, like how did I let it get to here? It's just honoring, hey, it's here, and my power is in the present moment around, let's make some different decisions. Let's shift in a new direction. Let's not beat myself up or stay in bed, beating myself up around everything that happened. Let me just choose to move forward and just making better decisions. Integrating the data that potentially Mercury retrograde could have brought to your surface and moving forward. You know, with Mercury Direct now, you don't need to look in the rearview mirror. You don't need to beat yourself up. You don't need to live in regret. Regret will make your heart feel heavy and it will lead to shame and guilt spirals, which in a weird way lead to more actions for you to feel shameful and guilty about. It's not to say that you're perfect, nobody is, but it's this energy around what's done is done. It makes no use staying in bed, beating myself up around, God, I can't believe you did this and did this, because then you're just gonna wanna escape from those thoughts by overindulging or to numb the thoughts or to not deal with it. It's just making peace around, yeah, you know, I texted some questionable texts an uh, extra Mai Tai was consumed. Like things were done, I'm not proud of it, but all I have control over is how I proceed forward and all I have control over is this particular Saturday morning and I'm going to turn over a new leaf. I'm going to integrate some new rituals and routines, not extreme, be mindful around where we feel tempted to go to extreme because that's very hard to be sustainable. It's just striving to today I will begin again. Today I will love myself. Today I will accept myself. Today I will accept what transpired, but I'll love myself enough to shift direction in order to build some positive momentum in the directions that I really want to move in. So we will talk about this astrology day by day, but I do want to let you know, quick note that all times that I utilize are in the time zone PDT. So many of the influences, for example, Mercury entering Virgo happen so late on Sunday that for a lot of you, it'll actually happen next Monday. So you'll wanna adjust specific time zone to your local time zone in order to take note of when these energetics will happen for you based on where it is that you are located within this wide and wonderful world. I also wanna let you know I have timestamps available below should you feel called to jump to a particular day, jump back to a particular day. As always, I do have a tendency to talk very fast. I talk with my hands. I get comments complaining about it all of the time, but this is me. 
And without further ado, let's go ahead and take it into the astrology for Monday, September 2nd. So happy Monday and happy Virgo new moon. The new moon in Virgo will land on Monday, September 2nd at 6.56 p.m. PDT. And this Virgo new moon is ripe for any sort of rituals and routines that you want to invite in and sustain because it takes consistency in order to grow something. You know, I always think about how Virgo is mercurial earth, right? It's ruled by Mercury, yet it's an earth sign. Like Mercury is of the mind, ideas, yet earth is very practical. It's things that we can touch and taste. And it really reflects the physical effort that it takes to take something from a thought to a thing. <laughs> and that the day that we eat the fruit is not the day that we plant the seed. Like when we view Virgo through this harvest-like lens, it's really the energy of that consistency around showing up day in, day out to water your crops to believe in the potentiality that this seed will grow into something beautiful. Because it can be hard when you're early in a fitness journey, when you're early into fixing your lifestyle or into eating healthier, you don't see the results right away and you have to believe in the potentiality around if I show up for the seed, if I water it, it will bloom. And I trust myself to take care of this seed, take care of this idea, take care of this potential. You will never be able to unlock the potential of your soul, right? The seed of your soul. If you do not show up, water, care for it. And that takes consistency. Sure, there might be days that you make different decisions and you don't exactly water the seed of your thriving business. Show up the next day. Oftentimes when we have one day off of habits, like, oh, what's the use? And we slip back into bad habits and we think, oh, the seed was defective. No, you just didn't show up for it. And it takes a lot of faith to consistently show up for something, to water something, even when it's not physical, even when it's not there. And that's what Virgo is all about, is around watering the seed of your own becoming, even if it's not visual at this moment. Like you might eat one healthy meal and you're not gonna look in the mirror and see a six pack suddenly, like it takes sustained effort. And I would argue, and this might be my <laughs> Virgo bias, but I would argue that it makes it even more rewarding when you do know what went into it when you do know how often you had to water that seed and when you first see that sprout break the surface, you might think, oh, that final watering did it or that final workout did it, but it was all of the decisions that you made every single day that build up. Because like I said, we can think that these little decisions that we make are inconsequential. It doesn't matter if I order this extra my tire for a skip my workout, but these small efforts do create this momentum. They create the snowball effect within your world. And I'm referencing a lot of health and work, but you'll want to see where within your chart you have 11 degrees Virgo and really ask what rituals and routines do I want to invite in within this arena of my life? Maybe if it lands in the 11th house of friendship, maybe it's having more gatherings as part of your daily routine. Maybe if it's in the third house, it's showing up for that sustained effort on your social media. You'll want to see where within your chart that is landing and really asking yourself to take the vision of what it is that you want in that sector or the ideas that you have and integrate it within your daily routine, knowing that it will create this snowball effect to get closer to that big picture. Any big picture is made of a lot of smaller things, a lot of small details. So that new moon lands Monday evening and do know that we have about a three day window to work with this new moon. And one of my favorite ways to work with the Virgo new moon is to really just allow your daily routine to be a microcosm of what it is that you want to call in. Like allow your actions to reflect what it is that you are creating. And this is such a great technique for imposter syndrome. In those moments that you start to doubt or question if the seed that you're watering has the potentiality to grow, to bloom, if you will be able to reap the physical manifestations of what it is that you desire. You can start to doubt yourself. You can start to question yourself. And you can even look back to the past framework of who you've been in the past and be like, who am I to say that I'm a fit person? I have all these life experiences of never setting foot in a gym and having these particular habits. And it could be powerful when you're shifting into this new self-concept around, I'm someone who's fit. I'm someone who takes care of myself around in those moments of doubting and questioning around, well, I don't physically look 
like somebody who is fit or look like somebody who takes care of themselves, be like, who am I not to align myself to I am somebody who is fit and concerned with my health when I've gone to the gym four times this week? Or let's say you're starting a YouTube channel and not that many people are watching it. Who am I not to say that I'm a YouTuber? I film every single week. If you're working on your music, who am I to say that I'm not a musician? I practice my guitar five times a week. It could be helpful in those moments of imposter syndrome and doubt, which can lead you to backslide into old habits or old rituals around allowing your actions to back it up around who am I not to be somebody who is fit. I'm hitting the gym, my actions back it up. Maybe the results aren't there yet, but my actions back it up. And I know that if I water this seed, it will bloom into something beautiful. And I believe in that. And the energy of Virgo is around where it is that we can purify, where it is that we can improve, where it is that we can do better. And so we're seeing a lot of data. Girl, what? Not my best friend's Alexa, piping into Magic Monday with misinformation. Girl, the new moon's in Virgo and it's opposing Saturn. What is she on about? Why would it be in Aquarius? She's talking about the full moon? That wasn't even on Saturn. Anyways, aside from the misinformation, essentially, so there's a lot that this new moon is pointing out to us around what needs to be cleaned up or how we need to clean up our acts. And a lot of times when the mess feels too overwhelming, there could be a temptation where we just don't even want to face it, right? We don't even want to face the extent of the mess or the extent of what in our lives feels messy or out of control. And so there is an ask with this new moon to take in the extent of the mess. Like if we take it back to the vibe check, lying in bed, there might be a temptation around, I don't want to look at my phone and see what I was texting. I don't want to check my bank account and see how much I spent on my ties. I don't want to have to apologize to my friend for whatever I did. I don't want to do it. So I'm just going to avoid it. I'm just going to avoid it. When you avoid it, you're not able to face the extent of the mess and thus make the action steps necessary so that you're no longer in alignment with messy situations <laughs> within your life. Because if you just avoid that mess, bury that mess, you will continue to perpetuate those behaviors or those patterns because there will be an energy around running from it, not wanting to face it. And what's weird about it is that sometimes the judgment, like the overwhelming judgment that we have towards ourselves when we take in the extent of the mess around, how did I let my life get like this? How did I let my night get like this? Oftentimes that judgment or our own anticipation of that judgment and the shame that we feel is what keeps us from facing it and thus cleaning it up. And then we are likely to make those same choices. So there's the same behaviors. And so there's an ask with this Virgo new moon opposing Saturn to face something, face our habits, face our rituals, face our routines, but view it not through the lens of judgment. That's super important this week. Because we also have in the morning time, we have Mercury in Leo training Chiron in Aries. Now this may ring a bell because this was also part of the Mercury retrograde story. So it's repeating itself for the third and final time. And this is this energy, especially with the new moon answering to Mercury around not allowing this cleaning up of your act to be through this lens of self-hatred around how did you let things get like this, but just this energy around, I deserve to live in this clean environment or this purified environment or with rituals and routines that feel good. And I forgive myself. I forgive myself for what transpired last night. That's not in alignment with who it is that I want to be, but I forgive myself because oftentimes that shame is what perpetuates this behavior. And yes, there could be energy around needing to face something. I need to face the extent of my spending. I need to face my blood pressure, whatever it is. We have to face something within our life that could feel very messy. And it's honoring, even if there are things that are self-destructive and not in alignment with who it is that you wanna be, it's also honoring you were doing the best that you could at the time being. Like a lot of times our bad habits, our destructive habits are us just trying to cope or just trying not to feel a painful emotion. And so it's just important to hold compassion for yourself, even if you've had stuff in your past that you're not particularly proud of or around. I was somebody who was in pain, I was in suffering, and I was striving to do what I could in order to cope in that time of my life. And it's not allowing this looming shame around how did I let myself get in this much debt? How did I let my blood pressure get like this? How did I let this happen? How did I let this happen? It's just this energy around, I forgive myself for getting myself in this situation, for getting myself in this mess, but I love myself enough to get me out of it. 
especially moving forward. Now, with that being said, this may not be the night that you're necessarily inspired to integrate all of these lifestyle shifts. Because that evening we do have Mars and Gemini squaring Neptune in Pisces. And this lands at 9, 10 p.m. But the energy of Neptune, it tends to kind of bleed into surrounding days. So you definitely could start this week not feeling particularly motivated. You know, it's definitely giving that energy when you're kind of like hung over in bed. There might be an energy around beating yourself up. But with the energy of Virgo New Moon, it's like, I need to start doing better. I need to start, you know, running. I need to start working on my mental health. I need to start doing this. I need to start doing that. But you're not doing any of it. Like that's kind of the vibe with Monday's astrology. Now, hopefully you're planting seeds in order to genuinely move your life in this direction. But with Mars in Gemini square Neptune, we have a lot of ideas. We have a lot of visions. But Action-wise, we may not be feeling particularly inspired. Like we're thinking about, I need to clean, I need to run, I need to apologize. We're thinking about all these things that we should be doing, but we're just lying there. <laughs> in bed, rotting away, thinking about all of the things that we could be doing. And here's what I want to say about that. You're not a machine. You're not a robot. And sometimes Virgo energy can make us feel like we need to be a machine. We need to be a robot. We need to be perfect. Maybe your oopsie wasn't as big as, you know, buying eight Mai Tais and making a scene. Like who knows what the oopsie was. You could be beating yourself up around a small oopsie, right? Around, gosh, I cannot believe I didn't do that extra overtime assignment or whatever it is. And beating yourself up about it and allowing this analysis paralysis around where it is that you are not perfect to keep you from making any progress at all. Because sometimes perfectionism can be a trap for procrastination, honestly, in that you want to have a YouTube channel, but you're like, but it needs to be perfect. Everything needs to be perfect. I cannot show up until it's perfect <laughs> or whatever it is that you're wanting to work on until it's perfect. Like a lot of little imperfect actions are better than waiting for this one perfect sweep and wondering year after year, why do I not have the harvest? Because you didn't plant the seed because you were waiting for the perfect conditions of the soil. The seed will grow when you water it and when you show up imperfectly because it's easy to compare ourselves to people who have mastered their craft. And to compare that to our measly first steps and be like, how am I possibly going to get there? But it's important to know they did not start there. Like whatever your passion is, whatever your craft is, let's say you play piano and you're comparing yourself to your favorite pianist. It's so important to know that the way that their 2000th live show went was not how their first live show went. Everybody starts somewhere and you waiting for the perfect moment or the perfect conditions or when you feel perfect enough or you feel good enough, you're just going to have year after year wondering where your harvest is. The harvest grows when you plant the seed and when you show up, whether the weather is beautiful, whether it's not, regardless, you show up. And that's why I say, it helps to understand that everybody starts somewhere. So reading your idols like memoirs, like thinking about where it is that they came from, or even if you're striving to get on content creation, I always say, don't do this with my videos. <laughs> but I always say on YouTube, sort by date added first. Like notice where people started, not talk as easily as they did at first. Their graphics probably weren't as good. Whatever it is, it's important to know that everybody starts somewhere. And with Mars square Neptune, there could just be this energy around feeling suspended in procrastination or in overthinking that's leading to no action whatsoever. That's really the vibe with Mars square Neptune. We could just be feeling not very motivated. We could feel inclined to want to procrastinate. We could feel inclined to want to escape. I'll get my life together next week. I'll get my life together tomorrow, 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 tomorrow. And Here's what I want to say. There's an important ask this week to listen to your body. So I'm not here sitting in my Betsy's living room saying like, hustle, grind, you need to be a machine, you need to be perfect. Listen to your body this week and every week, but be present in your rest, just as present as you would be during your work. Like a lot of times when we need a morning in bed or we need a nap, we can beat ourselves up around, oh, I should be at the gym, I should be doing this, I should be doing this. Are you even resting? Are you even resting? Your rest will not feel restorative if you're spending the entire time thinking, oh, I should be doing this or I should be doing this or guilting yourself from it. You will not be able to drink up that rest that your body, mind, and spirit genuinely need in order to show up for everything else. And same goes if you are overworking, not giving yourself the rest that you need. One fortifies the other. You're not a machine. You're not a robot. No one's expecting you to work 18 hours a day without breaks or without rest. And it could be so helpful to just give yourself permission 
option to turn off every so often. Like that has absolutely been my journey on this trip. I definitely meant to work a little bit more than I have been working here, but my soul just needed this. Like my soul just needed to do nothing. Like stop viewing doing nothing as lazy. Like sometimes the most genius ideas come when we allow ourselves to pause or when we allow ourselves to rest. Sometimes we're able to heal. Sometimes we're able to face things in those quiet moments in stillness and being present with our rest and present with our restoration. Like a lot of times when we are overworking, we could be running from ourselves. Like I've been talking about self-destructive habits such as, you know, over drinking or overindulging, over shopping, what have you. But sometimes we can overwork to avoid facing ourselves, keeping ourselves busy to avoid facing ourselves. And so there's just an ask, if your body needs some rest, enjoy it. Uh, savor it. If you happen to be off today, savor it. Be present with your rest. It will allow you to show up for your work. If you need to take a nap, be there. Don't be in bed just thinking about, ugh, you're so lazy, you're so dumb, you should be doing A, B, or C. And just know with Mars square Neptune, your energy could be feeling a little distracted. It could be feeling all over the place. You could be more inclined to want to escape. You could be feeling a little bit more drained, a little bit more exhausted. Listen to your body. You can trust yourself. You can trust your body to tell you what it needs. Oftentimes when we push ourselves or we hustle or we don't listen to these cues, we could disconnect our mind-body connection that the energy of Virgo is very fond of around listening to your body. If you need a pause, if you need a break, if you need to drink some water, if you need to move, like it's really allowing that connection to be sound. Because like I said, you're not a robot. <laughs> you're not a machine. You have fluctuating needs. You have fluctuating desires. So it's listening to that because that's what's going to allow you to move into rituals and routines that are genuinely for your highest and best good. Because you could be doing all the right things and still not feel present, still not feel connected to your own experience. It's important to work on that mind-body connection and trust yourself. It's okay to rest. It's okay to take a pause. If you need to skip today's workout, just pick it up tomorrow, right? It's not guilting yourself around, oh, you're so lazy. I knew you wouldn't stick with the gym. It's just, it's just deciding, hey, loving myself yesterday meant going to the beach rather than going to the gym. And today loving myself means showing up for this ritual and routine that's getting me in alignment to where it is that I wanna go. And just knowing with Mars square Neptune, you might just be feeling a little all over the place, a little drained, a little scattered. That's okay, one step at a time, be present for your rest and plant the seeds around what rituals and routines you want to invite in. So on Tuesday, September 3rd, the moon is in Virgo all day long. We are now in the waxing crescent moon phase. So you still have early this week to set your Virgo new moon intentions to plant them into the earth. And do know that there is a lot of forward momentum currently happening in the cosmos. We are now in the eclipse window. We are building to the Pisces lunar eclipse on September 17th, 2024. And something around eclipses that tends to speed things up. It tends to accelerate things quite a bit. And it's important to know that your life can change at any moment, but those overnight successes that we hear about and that we see, oftentimes it is the result of years and years of diligent daily efforts. It takes 10 years to make an overnight success, right? It's kind of the energy around, let's say you've been working on your singing day in and day out, and then you get an opportunity where things accelerate quite a bit. It's like people can say, oh, they blew up so fast, but it's like, no, I've been singing and practicing day in and day out, watering that seed, even when I had no reason to believe that it could bloom into something. That's where trusting yourself and following your calling is helpful. It's like you had no reason to believe that that could bloom one day, but there's just this knowing, right? It's following your calling. That's going to be important as we lead to the Pisces lunar eclipse that's aligning in the cosmos. But all of that to say, things are accelerating quite a bit. And it's like, yes, things could feel like they're happening very fast, but it's important to note, yes, this amazing relationship might've came into my life very randomly, but this is after me putting in the work to better my communication patterns and, and to work on my own healing. Or maybe I get this work opportunity that quickens things quite a bit, but it's a result of a lot of daily practices and efforts. It's just important to know that your life can change. This current experience is the result of what past you has planted. This is the harvest, right? And it might be a harvest that you're pleased with. It might be a harvest that you're not so pleased with, but you can always plant different seeds. If you're not pleased with this harvest, you could plant different seeds. You can encourage different thoughts. You can encourage different habits. This is the culmination of your past efforts, your thoughts, your beliefs, your habits, your actions that have been in alignment with it. And it's not guilting yourself around, how did I let things get this way? It's just saying, I don't like this harvest. Let me plant in a new plot of land. <laughs> 
Let me have a new watering schedule. It's just honoring without guilt or shame where it is that you want to be showing up better. It's taking responsibility over our experience. And yes, things are going to accelerate. Things are going to quicken. But a lot of times it is reaping what we've sown for good or for bad. The Virgo moon opposes Saturn in the morning time and then squares Jupiter around 11 a.m. And it's this reminder that for us to have growth and expansion, that's the energy of Jupiter, it will take some Saturn. It will take discipline. It will take commitment. It will take facing the extent of the mess in order to clean it up. Or it will take facing where it is that we could be doing better. And it's important to befriend discipline because especially with what Mars is up to this week, it's important to know that motivation fades. Okay, <laughs> like if you're somebody where you get this inspiration around, I'm gonna have these new habits, I'm gonna stop this bad habit, I'm going to have this new lifestyle shift, and you're all excited, right? You're motivated, and then the next week you kind of get over it, and then you're right back to where you were. Like motivation fades, and it can be great when we're feeling motivated, when we're feeling inspired, but it will fade, especially with Mars entering Cancer tomorrow. Motivation will fade, and that's where we need to lean upon discipline, and that's where we need to lean upon consistency. That's where we need to lean upon commitment, and it's not overextending yourself. It's not overworking yourself. It's just making certain commitments around, this is who it is that I am, and my actions reflect that, and I can trust myself to make the actions that'll take care of myself, who it is that I am now, and who it is that I am moving towards. Now keep in mind, we have Mars separating from Neptune, and so you may not be feeling particularly inspired, and you may not be feeling particularly motivated, but when motivation wanes, we lean upon other things, such as discipline or commitment. And it might be important, or if you are thinking about you know, skipping your workout and napping instead, if you are thinking about not putting in overtime at your job so that you could spend time in another arena of your life. Like I said, success is a balanced lifestyle, health is a balanced lifestyle. I'm not approaching this from hustle, grind, you're a robot, you're a machine. But it's gonna be important this week to decipher what is coming from me genuinely nurturing myself and being present with my rest and pouring into other arenas of my life. And where is this procrastination or not wanting to show up for my commitments or my rituals really just showing up around not being in the mood? <laughs> or not wanting to. Like it might be important to decipher the two because sometimes if you're just like not in the mood, oftentimes you'll feel so much better after that workout or you'll feel so much better after you show up for that particular work project rather than just letting it loom over you. Like a lot of times you will be proud of yourself if you push through that inertia around not feeling like it. That's where we build the muscle of consistency, the muscle of discipline that can lead you to experience more. Discipline does not need to be synonymous with suffering or from depriving ourselves. It can actually be a tool and structure in order for you to experience more, achieve more, feel more within this experience. I'll say on Tuesday, with the energy of Virgo Moon, attuned to your rituals and your routines, the opposition to Saturn, there might be certain annoying factors of your life. People being annoying, coworkers being annoying, just small details of life messes being annoying. Just life can be a little annoying sometimes, and you might be feeling that on Tuesday. But again, how it is that you show up to do one thing is how it is that you show up to do everything. That's a very Virgo-like statement. And so if there is a certain work situation and you're tempted to take the easy way out, that might be a temptation with Mars square Neptune. It's really just upholding yourself to the standard around who it is that you want to be and allowing your actions to be in alignment with that. Even if it would be easier to slip back into old patterns or to avoid or to escape or to brush it under the rug, you know, that's going to be a temptation with Mars square Neptune. There could be this pull the siren's call that wants to lure us into bad habits <laughs> or into a direction that we don't want to go. And that's where it's important to decide as the captain of your ship, no, I want to go here. Like this current is not going to get me to where it is that I want to go. I feel this pull, but how it is that I show up for this thing is going to have ripple effects in so many other arenas of my life. How I do one thing is how I do everything. On Wednesday, September 4th, at 12.46 p.m. Mars, the planet of action, assertion, advocacy, will enter its fall, the sign of Cancer. Mars does not like being in this territory of the sky. It much prefers being in Cancer's opposite sign, Capricorn. Because Mars, essentially, is how we win. <laughs> it's how we get what we want. And when Mars is in Capricorn, we get what we want in a very structured, pragmatic, practical approach around what has succeeded before and applying those steps, taking in the reality of the situation in order to achieve and improve. Cancer can be an energy that wins, but how it is that we're going to win with Mars and Cancer is going to be quite different. 
And how cancer wins is cancer wins via its responsiveness. If we were to take this energy of harvest, right? Mars and Capricorn would be the energy around, you know, this is the proper soil that can sustain this particular wheat that we are growing. This is the conditions that have worked with in the past. This is the structure that you need to apply in order to grow the wheat, and this will equate success. And in a lot of cases, that will lead to success. But Cancer is around taking things in as they are now, around observing the data, even like with the wheat, around what's wilting a little bit, or maybe we need to adjust here. Like Cancer is the crab, right? It goes side to side. It's not necessarily as point A to point B, but it can be powerful around sidestepping and observing what's working, what's not, and how can I nourish this wheat? <laughs> or this success and how it is showing up now. How, how can I respond to the circumstance as it is now rather than just applying the step-by-step, -step, which may not be the proper approach in every certain situation. And that's where it gets tricky this week's astrology because it's like, yes, have commitment. Yes, have these rituals and routines, but you are a sentient being. You have needs, you have emotions. You are different moment to moment, day to day. There might be a formula for success that all the entrepreneurs advocate or all the fitness gurus advocate, but you are the shifting being. You're not step by step. You don't always work in this linear fashion. So it's important to allow yourself that humanity, allow yourself those fluctuations around, hey, there will be days in which what's really gonna be self-care is for you to spend time with friends rather than go to the gym. Like if you go to the gym, you're not gonna get a good workout because you feel so deprived, you didn't eat enough lunch or whatever it is. It's responding to the circumstance. Again, not making it a story, just choosing to take the action steps necessary in order to nurture how things are showing up now. And where this energy can get tricky <laughs> is that with Mars and Cancer, we can be a little bit more emotionally reactive, potentially. We can be a little bit more passive aggressive, or if we allow our emotions to get the better of us within the heat of the moment around responding in a certain way at the bar or choosing, you know, I'm sad today, so I'm gonna go drink Mai Tais. It's like allowing our emotions to guide our action steps, which again, Allow your emotions. You are not a machine. You are not a robot. It's not saying that you need to apply an emotionalist perspective. It's just not allowing your emotions to control you. And with Mars and Cancer, we can find our energy levels fluctuate quite a bit. You might get random bursts of energy like late at night <laughs> when the moon's out, particularly. You may find that you randomly feel inspired in opportune moments, right? You're in the shower and you're like, I want to do X, Y, Z. There is a particular secret weapon that is alive within September astrology when you take intuitive action, when you take aligned action. And that's why I'm saying hustle, grind, systematic, do the same thing every single day, even if it's unsustainable, is not how we're going to win in September 2024's astrology. Because with the planet of action answering to the luminary of intuition, there is a particular superpower that's alive around taking action at the aligned time. And that only happens when you're listening to your body, when you're listening to the cues. That's what's so powerful around listening to our waxes and wanes and trusting it, following our instincts and trusting our instincts around, hey, I just feel really drawn around wanting to take a nap. Like that is just what really is gonna nurture me. You can find that because you took a nap and didn't go to the gym, you learn later, oh, the gym was out of power and none of the treadmills were working anyway. And you're like, oh, thank goodness I listened to my intuition. Your intuition knows things that you do not. Even your body knows things that you do not with us being in Virgo season. So it's around trusting that and not forcing yourself, not pushing yourself. Again, there's a difference between forcing and pushing versus showing up with discipline and commitment. If you are genuinely like intuitively just like, ah, I just do not feel inclined to work on this project or gosh, I just really am craving a nap. It's about listening to those whispers because you will also also, if you develop that trust around listening to your body when it's asking for rest, when it's asking for nourishment, you will also feel the tide turn when you're feeling inspired around, I want to create this thing, or I'm feeling inspired to create this particular TikTok. Your intuition is plugged into knowledge that you are not aware of. And a lot of times when we're in loops of guilt or shame, we can't develop that connection. And that will be something for you to work on within this month and honestly beyond. And so from a lunar perspective, the moon is in Virgo from the beginning of the day till like around 9 a.m. It trines Uranus, opposes Neptune, squares Mars. So with all of this mutable energy, you could definitely be feeling scattered. This is kind of the vibe when you're in bed, hungover, beating yourself up about the night before, and you're just thinking about all of these different arenas of your life that you want to get together around. Now that I'm at it, I need to 
fix my wardrobe and now I'm at it, I need to start dating again. Like when you just start going down this rabbit hole of all of these things that you need to improve or clean up. And you can also just feel this when it comes to your work schedule, when it comes to the errands and the responsibilities that are on your plate. You could just be feeling quite scattered, <laughs> a little all over the place with how much is demanding and asking for your time and energy. And honestly, it's not even giving productive. It's kind of giving like analysis paralysis. Either your perfectionism is paralyzing you where everything needs to be perfect so you're expending unnecessary time on a certain project or you can't make up your mind or you're stuck in what's the best way to go about this particular task. Again, imperfect action is better than no action at all. And the Virgo moon trining Pluto, who's now in Capricorn, affirms that. The power of showing up consistently. Little things become big things when we show up consistently. And then the moon enters Libra at 9.12 a.m. where it'll stay for the rest of the day and ask to appreciate our harmonious one-to-one -one connections, behold the beauty within this experience, pursue the pleasure within this experience, savor the sweetness within this experience. So on Thursday, September 5th, the only energy all day is that the Libra moon will align with Venus in Libra at 2.12 a.m. PDT, which is a celestial reminder that balance is key in all things. Success is a balanced lifestyle. Health is a balanced lifestyle. Living in extremes is not always healthy nor sustainable. And with moon and Venus aligning in Libra, it's an ask to observe the balance within our world. Like what's the use of drinking green juice and going to hot yoga at 5 a.m. every single day and having this diligent work schedule if you don't allow yourself to invest within your connections or if you don't allow yourself to spend time in nature, like the enjoyment of our life fortifies what it is that we are working towards and building within our life. They fortify one another. When it gets off kilter, when it gets off balance, that's when we can live in extremes, whether it's living in extremes around orderly, precise, systematic, perfectionistic, or they're living in extreme around hedonistic and procrastinating and escapism. It's just asking for a balance. Like oftentimes you'll see people who are very, very buttoned up or workaholic or very, very structured or controlled where when they get a taste of freedom or when they allow themselves to let their hair down, they go to extreme, right? There is no moderation whatsoever. It's either living in one extreme or the other. Success is a balanced lifestyle. Health is a balanced lifestyle because you can do all the right things to have a healthy lifestyle and still be quite unhealthy. <laughs> like you can get up at 5 a.m. every single day. You could drink your lemon water. You could go to the gym. You could do all the right things and still be existing in an unhealthy state of mind and an unhealthy life if it is not balanced. Like what is the purpose of working so hard on something that we never take the time to enjoy? It actually makes your pursuit towards success, whatever that may look like to you, more sustainable when you take time to enjoy this current experience, when you take time to float in the ocean, when you take time to invest within your connections, it allows you to show up for your tasks and responsibilities feeling more motivated. Because while it's beautiful to be thinking towards our future, especially with the sun building to oppose Saturn, tomorrow is not promised. So it's important to build towards tomorrow while still finding those ways and those opportunities to enjoy today. Whether it's taking time to invest within your connections, even taking time to talk with your coworkers, taking time to make a delicious meal every so often, taking time to enjoy working out. That's, that's my best tip if you are trying to integrate something that is more healthy into your routine. Find things that you enjoy. Find ways that you like to move your body. Find the sort of foods that you like to eat. Anything that feels like forcing or that is not in alignment with you ultimately is not so sustainable. Like it's the most sustainable when yes, it's healthy, it's moving in the direction of where you wanna go, but you like it and it allows balance. Like that's the biggest thing with moon and Venus in Libra is not living in extremes in any arena, not being all work and no play, not being all play and no work, not being all hermit era and never out in the world. It's just wanting balance. Really integrate the mantra, success is a balanced lifestyle. On Friday, September 6th, for the third and final time, Mercury and Leo will square off with Uranus in Taurus. So we've got Mercury heading direct. And again, this is giving us permission to look towards the future. Whatever transpired last night, however many Mai Tais were consumed, however many tacos you doordash, however many purchases you made online, the past is done and all we can do is look towards the future. And to know with Mercury square Uranus, things can change at any time thing. And sometimes that happens around something that shifts within our external environment that forces change. And sometimes it's just a mindset shift, right? Just that 
moment when you're lying in bed after consuming too many Mai Tais. Maybe you've had many mornings of consuming many Mai Tais, but this particular moment and the sobering perspective around what transpired and, and what decisions led to how you're feeling in this moment, maybe there's just like an aha or in like an epiphany or just like, no more, I'm sick of feeling this way. And to know that you're not the same person that you were last night when you consumed too many Mai Tais, that you were last month when you made a decision that you do not align with. Like, yes, you might still be the same individual, but everything is perpetually new and novel and changing. And this is actually gonna be a Magic Monday. First on the channel, we're going to read an excerpt. I found this book in Kauai. It's called Wait, A Love Letter to Those in Despair. And I've been reading it on the beach. And there's a lot within this book that speaks to me, but particularly this passage. So it's called Everything is New. When you walk into a room and think it's the same room you were in last week, you're not perceiving correctly. You've never seen this room before. It's different from the one you were in last week. If you see me and think I'm the person I was last week, you're not seeing me either. I'm not the same. There's no repetition in life. If you're truly present and really experiencing something, recognize that it's new, different from anything you've seen or heard before. If it feels the same, it's not real. It's a replica of something you've experienced earlier, a product of your mind, not reality. If you have a beautiful photo you want to archive, you can scan and save it on your computer or you can print a copy. Consciousness functions the same way. It photocopies experience and then the next time you encounter something similar, it shows you the copy and, it th and you think your early experience is happening again. But it's a copy, not the original. Reality has changed. It's always changing and we're living in a photocopy. And I love that passage because a lot of times it could just feel like things are the exact same day in and day out. And we can look at the very mundane aspects of our life around every single day. It feels like I go to work and I go to the gym and all of these things day in and day out. It feels the same, but it's not. You might go to the gym at the same time every single day, but there's elements that are shifting and changing all around you. Your body is shifting and changing all around you. Your connections are shifting and changing all around you. And so it's not allowing the necessary logistics and mundane elements of life to make you feel like everything is the same. Everything is different and you are different as well. You're not the same person who was drinking Mai Tais yesterday, right? It's knowing that we always have the opportunity to see something different or to show up differently, to have different awarenesses, to have different ahas, to have different epiphanies. And to a logical level, this could be receiving a message that is unexpected. This could be getting a piece of tea, gossip that's out of nowhere. This could be news coming in that's bizarre, outlandish. This may be in connectivity to your Mercury retrograde story, to something unexpected that could have happened at the end of July, but you know the drill with Uranus. It's all about expecting the unexpected, and you could see something differently. Again, you could go to work in the same way every single day, and one day notice something different, or see your coworker in a new way, or have a new idea, have a new epiphany. It's important to allow our reality the space for novelty, the space for changes and fluctuations. And it's important to allow our reality the space to be different. And it's important to train our eye to observe what's different within our reality, not allow things to feel so dull or so monotonous around the same thing day in, day out. It's not my love. Things are constantly shifting and evolving and transforming. And that's where structure can actually lead to more expansiveness. Because sometimes when we have more structure, we have more awareness to be able to observe the shifts. Like when you show up for your workout classes, you have the structure where you're able to have this smile post around how your body's getting stronger. You're like, gosh, the same move last week was exhausting, but now I feel stronger. Or like when you have structure to show up and practice your guitar scales every single week, you're like, gosh, I'm getting better. Like sometimes structure allows us to be more witness around where things are improving or where things are changing or where you will never have this moment again. And you will never have this version of yourself within this moment that you will again. And sometimes it helps to just seize the particular magic of this particular moment. Get to know yourself in this particular moment. Get to know this experience. Look at it through fresh eyes. Look at yourself through fresh eyes. What would it look like if you didn't allow yourself to be held to this photocopy version of who you used to be? How can you get to know who it is that you are now? So just something that's aligning on Friday. But what I would say with Mercury Square Uranus is, Unexpected news, unexpected messages, unexpected ahas. Your mind could be feeling restless. You might have a hard time sleeping on Friday. You could be feeling scattered. You could be feeling a little bit all over the place. But again, allow novelty, allow your eye to notice new things about the world and about yourself. 
And, and on that note about your connections too, because the moon's in Libra all day long. And because again, we can also view people the same day in and day out, but they're also growing and evolving. So it's also being present for the version of your partner that they are now, or the version of your friend that they are now. You know, outside of the obvious wonder and beauty of the land that I am in, one of the sweetest parts of this trip has just been being able to spend so much uninterrupted time with my best friend and getting to know her within this stage of her life. I mean, we've been attached to one another's hip since we met 12 years ago. Like I met her the week that we moved into our dorms and it was like instant soul recognition. I mean, everybody who knew us in college knew us as Haley and Blank. Like we were a package duo. We were always together. And I'm someone who, I'm an introvert. Like there gets to be a point in time in which I kind of get sick of people and I need to be on my own, not with her. Hanging out with her feels like hanging out with myself. It's just the most natural, organic, Thing. It's like breathing when I'm hanging out with her. And you know, it's always how our friendship has been. And the 12 years that we've been friends, like it's just seen so many life shifts between the two of us. And I've gotten to know so many different versions of her. It's always her. Like she is just the most authentic, radiant, bright light in this world. Like she is just who it is that she is. And who it is that she is is such a gift to this planet. So it's not that she's being different people, but it's just like different versions of her and different iterations of her. And it's such a gift to be able to experience her within these different stages of her life and to like get to know her and who it is that she is now. And I feel like a lot of times when it comes to adult friendships, like things are very planned. It's like, okay, we're gonna do this and do this particular activity. But I mean, like some of my favorite moments on this trip have just been she and I just like laughing, listening to the radio, driving from place to place, or playing with the cats at the Airbnb, or giggling, watching some HBO show, and eating mochi. Like just these ordinary mundane moments, but being able to witness the novelty around who it is that she is in this stage of her life. And I'm, and I, and I'm so proud of who it is that she is within the stage of her life, and just the shifts that she's made to better her life, and to improve her life, and to build a life that is reflective of her own authenticity. I'm so proud proud to be her best friend and to get to know all of the different versions of her that I've gotten to know. And I'm sure she would say the same for me. And it's just like allowing the important people within your life, whether it's your partners or your friends, just allowing yourself to have that space to get to know who it is that they are now. Sometimes when we enter relationships, when we enter friendships, we hold those people to a photocopy of who it is that they were when we met them. We have expectations around that, but it's really just allowing the growth of who it is that they are now. And I feel like that's reflective within Friday's astrology as the Libra moon trines Jupiter and Gemini earlier in the day. It then, it then opposes Chiron around 7 a.m. And that's kind of the energy around, there can be parts where you miss or grieve certain elements of who someone used to be or you know, elements of what your friendship used to be, what your relationships used to be, right? There can be an energy where sometimes we can view where our partner or where our friends are evolving around, oh, are they gonna leave me behind? Are they outpacing me in some way? Or even if it's good changes, there could be a certain energy around I don't know this version of you. And like we established this friendship or this connection when you were someone different and I was someone different. And there can be a pang of loneliness or feeling left behind or feeling the energy around what does this mean for me? But it's really important to behold our connections around the novelty of how they are showing up currently and allow ourselves that same space as well. And with the Libra moon sextiling Mercury and Leo around 4 p.m., it's just like allowing yourself to be curious, to have conversations, to communicate around these things rather than suffering in silence. If you've ever had a situation where your partner gets on a health kick, there could be an energy where you're like, well, we used to have routines where we would, you know, watch shows and DoorDash tacos and you having these new habits aren't in alignment of this ritual that I really deeply appreciated. So it makes me question like, am I good enough? Are you gonna outgrow me or something of that nature? But again, it's allowing that space to grow. It's allowing our connections the space to be the best that they can be and trusting that we will evolve together if it's meant to be and utilizing communication in order to connect on where these fears of being left behind or no longer having that connection, where they can be coming from. Maybe it's time for a new routine. Maybe instead of door dashing tacos, you guys can go for a nice walk, right? Like as I change, as you change, we change, let's grow together <laughs> is the vibe. And on Friday to a very pragmatic level, 
the Libra Moon training Jupiter in Gemini earlier in the day, you can definitely be feeling more optimistic, definitely feeling the Friday feels okay, in the mood to socialize and connect, especially with the Libra Moon sextile Mercury and Leo. I will just say there can be certain pangs of loneliness, feeling left out, or maybe even fears of that you're going to be left out because you are witnessing somebody else change or something of that nature. You could also just have energies around being on Instagram and be like, is everyone getting engaged? <laughs> except for me does everyone have a million dollars except for me like there could be an energy around taking the veneer of what people are projecting and taking it as truth or authenticity it's just important to know you don't know the whole story again it's so important not to compare your rough first messy draft to people's end product or to compare the real raw mechanics of your world with other people's glossy filtered pictures that they put up. It's just important to honor that we don't know the full, <laughs> we don't know the full story. And you know, that evening there could be some news or a change of plans that kind of stops you in your tracks. That makes you feel a little shook. Okay, definitely emotionally, Friday could feel a little intense. We've got the Libra moon squaring Pluto and then entering Scorpio. We've also got Mercury square Uranus happening that evening. So there just could be certain things that are catching us by surprise, certain changed plans, and your emotions could be feeling quite intense. Again, what's important with Mars and Cancer is to honor things are constantly fluctuating and allow that to be a solace to your soul. If there is an energy on Friday where you're dealing with some emotions that you don't particularly like, that's what's nice about moving through some lunar energy is that things are constantly shifting. It won't always feel like it does right now. So just be present in what it is that you're feeling and trust that the tide will turn. On Saturday, September 7th, at 9.35 p.m., the Virgo sun will oppose Saturn in Pisces, which can give a little bit of a bummer energy. You know, this could be a little bit of a punch to the ego. Like I said, there's a lot of comparison energy alive within this week's astrology. Like there could be a vibe around comparing you practicing your piano to other people who have excelled and mastered their craft and feeling not good enough. And again, that could be something that motivates you to get better, or it could just be like, what's the point of trying, right? Or you could be witnessing what people are putting on social media and being like, why isn't my life like that? We're being much too critical of ourselves, I would say, over the weekend. And we're also just holding ourselves to unrealistic standards. Again, perfection is a myth. And that's where Virgo energy gets so tricky because it's an energy that's seeking perfection in an imperfect world. It's seeking order in a world that's naturally very chaotic. <laughs> it's a little bit of a losing battle in that lens. And so there's just an energy around allowing yourself to lose the battle with perfectionism. Because a lot of times when we stop trying to be perfect, we allow ourselves to work on being the best that we could be. <laughs> It's like holding yourself to the standard around, let me just work on being my personal best rather than feeling like I need to be perfect and even project this aura of perfectionism. Because there can be an energy where we put so much effort around wanting to be seen in a certain way or that we have it all together, or that we're so perfect. Well, internally we're in shambles. <laughs> Like an energy around you lying in bed after too many Mai Tais and regrettable decisions, but you got a great photo, so you're going to post the great photo. And people don't know the real backstory, right? And it doesn't matter that your own personal insides are in shambles because things look good on the outside or wherever that comes up. You know, if there's certain internal practices, your workaholic behavior, certain rituals that you've been using to look the part while not really showing up for your wellness on the internal, there could just be an energy around the price that we pay to be seen in a certain way and just realizing that it's not worth it. It's not worth putting so much of our energy trying to project this certain veneer while internally we're in shambles. Because the life that is lived for other people's applause or is to uphold certain societal expectations or definitions of perfection will feel unfulfilling ultimately. And sometimes we need to let down the veneer of who we feel like we need to be in order to allow who it is that we are. Messiness and all right? Like that energy around having too many Mai Tais and not wanting to apologize because we don't want to look dumb, but just needing to clean up the mess around that was not okay. And I'm going to strive to do better. That's all we can do is strive to do better, not brush under the rug and pretend like nothing's happening and continue perpetuating this behavior, but strive to do better, strive to improve and not take it so personally on you. Because again, that's living from the ego. And if you have this certain expectation that you always need to be beautiful and polished and the best ever, like you are setting yourself up to lose. I actually wanna read another 
Do you guys like the story time or is this too much? Is this book has been really moving me. I always feel like I find the perfect books at the perfect time. This was from the bookstore Talk Story in Kauai. I loved it so much. This section is called A Perfect Ten. Thinking always includes reaching. There's no rest. We think night and day to realize a goal or maintain an image. In fact, we cannot achieve anything. Everything is already here. We can start with the insight that we're already fine and don't need to accomplish anything. When you realize you're already free, you can be yourself. There's no need to pretend. The war in your consciousness can stop. Someone may think you're stupid. Someone else might think you're smart. Either way, your worth remains the same. You are a 10, perfect as you are. Why then do you ever have to make an effort? The only effort is non-effort to be yourself. Imagine raising a child this way. You simply offer confidence. You're doing well. You can't do anything wrong. Play, live, be happy. If you start out in life with a 10 and nothing can go wrong, any effort to become something outside of yourself is by definition misguided. The natural state of being is perfection. When you want to attain a certain status to make something of your life because you believe you're unworthy, that's where you go wrong. The more you try, the more off course you get. Just listen to life, to the voice of wisdom, to others, and say, yes, it's perfect. When you respect yourself as you are, you'll also respect others. And when you respect others, you'll try to understand why they say and do the things that they do. You're perfect. No one can add anything to you. Allow everyone to be themselves. From the beginning to the end of life, we all get a 10. We can play, live, and listen. It's giving up this battle around feeling like you need to achieve in order to feel worthy. It's allowing these action steps that will get us to where we wanna to go to not be rooted in this energy around needing to feel worthy or to earn validation or to earn success. It's acknowledging I'm already so perfect and so worthy within my own right as I am now that I want my habits and my actions to reflect that, that worthiness that I have within me. Because again, if we're chasing, we're always chasing. So it's just observing. You're perfect, not in an energy around needing to come across in a certain way, but just as you are, just being who it is that you are. And allowing these action steps to better your life come from that knowledge that you are already whole, you are already worthy, you are already valuable. It's simply aligning yourself to the action steps that affirm that and that reflect that. And not feeling like you need to prove or to chase or to live from the ego. Like if we live from the ego, we will always be chasing. We will never feel to be enough because there's always someone out there who's doing better than us, who's making more than us, who's prettier than us, who's younger than us, who's more successful than us. Like it's a losing battle. And so it's not feeling like you need to chase and prove who it is that you are. It's just sinking into who it is that you are already and striving to be the best that you can be. And so it's shifting away from proving yourself and aligning with just being yourself and taking the data around what is not in alignment with your true essence, with that pure potentiality, that seed of your soul that you want to nourish and that you want to flourish within you. And so on Saturday, the moon is in Scorpio all day long, which can lead to some intense emotions. You know, the moon is in its fall in Scorpio. And what's so funny is it trines, who it's answering to, Mars and Cancer. So we've got two planets in their fall, making a harmonious flow of energy. So definitely emotions can be strong, but your emotions can guide you towards the right aligned actions for you. You could definitely be feeling more fierce. You could want to advocate for something that you care deeply about. From a traditional perspective, the moon and Mars are in mutual reception. Mars is in a lunar territory. The moon is in a Mars territory. So they are helping each other. So again, our inner emotions, our intuition is guiding us towards the perfect action steps. And again, when we get out of the dialogue around, you should be doing more, you should be better. That's when we can really tap into what our soul is speaking to us around the nudges and the pings that is guiding us towards what is the most aligned. This happens rather early in the day, but I would definitely say follow your instincts. If you get a nudge around, I want to try that new bakery, or you get a nudge around, I wonder if I should reach out and call this person. Follow the nudge, follow the ping, okay? Trust your gut, follow your instincts. And great day to work out, especially if you need to move some intense energy, transmute some energy. On Sunday, September 8th, I do need to quicken this forecast up because my best friend is on her way home from work and I don't want her to have to tiptoe in her own home when she was gracious enough to allow me to film here. So let's just make it snappy. But I just want to say that the moon is in Scorpio all day long. It does try in Saturn. So there is this energy around stabilizing our emotions, allowing our passion to guide us towards the action steps that are best for us. So that's emphasized by the Scorpio moon, then sextiling Virgo sun. So again, we might be feeling things intensely, but strive for balance, okay, with Venus and Libra. Strive to meet in the middle. We don't want to live in extremes. You know, something funny about Virgo energy is that Virgo governs habits, but it's not necessarily good habits or bad habits. Like you'll meet some Virgos who have certain habits around 
getting up at a certain time and everything's orderly and precise. And you'll have some Virgos who their habits are drinking a bottle of Jack Daniels before 12 p.m. It's all around the habits that we have <laughs> within our life and striving not to live in extremes, right? <laughs> With the energy of Scorpio moon, really strive for the midline, right? Then that evening at 11.50 p.m., Mercury will enter its exaltation of Virgo. It does clear the shadow next week. So we do have a lot of forward momentum building. And with Mercury sitting in exalted territory, we can find that we're feeling a little bit more mentally clear, sharp, inclined to tune into the details, apply the data that Mercury retrograde could have brought to our awareness. So my loves, that is our Magic Monday Kona edition. Thank you so much for bearing with me with the unfamiliar backdrop and just with me being a little messy. You know, it's better to show up imperfectly than to delay waiting for perfection. It's kind of the vibe when it comes to this week's astrology. The Magic Monday mantra of the week is I strive to be and do the best I can. Allow your competition to be yourself. There is always someone who is doing better than us in ego level. And it's getting out of the race. It's getting out of the competition around I'm not going to compete in a losing battle. I'm going to compete with myself, with my own potential. I'm going to allow my goalpost to be the best that I can be, to make use of this seed of desire that the universe has given me and blossom it into the most prosperous <laughs> harvest possible. It's not comparing myself to that farmer's harvesting. It's simply allowing myself to be my own best competition, to excavate the most me out of me, the most potentiality out of me, and to know that I am perfect as I am and it's striving to have the action steps, the habits, the rituals, and the routines that allow me to unfold the perfection of how I was designed. Like if we think of a seed, it's perfect within its own making. It has the pure potentiality within it. But if we do not plant it in the right soil around the environment that will be best for our well-being, if we do not water it with the routines and the rituals, we will never be able to fully unfold the perfection of who it is that we are designed to be. So it's just this energy around, I'm going to strive to grow the most abundant harvest that I possibly can. I'm not gonna peek over at other farmers and what they got going on. Mm -mm. I am here to unfold the perfection of the soul that the divine has given me and to excavate all of the potential out of me, to know I am worthy and I am perfect as I am, but loving myself so much so that I wanna see all that's within me, all of the layers that I can excavate, the best version of myself that I can behold. And it's not chasing, it's not being like, then I'll be worthy, then I'll be deserving of love. It's seeing I'm so worthy and I'm so lovable as I am now. Now, I owe it to myself to see all of the different layers, all of the different nuances that I have in store. So my loves, if you made it to the end of the forecast, let me know by commenting below the wheat emoji <laughs> or using the word wheat within a sentence. My Instagram channel is at Haley Comet Astrology. My TikTok is the same. I would so love to connect with you over there. And until we meet again, drink lots of water and stay cosmic.